You're listening to the Wilson King Podcast. Run that track. This episode of the Wilson King Podcast is brought to you by Bright Live. Need a wedding DJ? Play in a band and looking for gigs or networking? Have a venue that needs an exciting event night? Contact Bright Live for all your wedding, entertainment, band, and DJ needs. We are dedicated to providing the best entertainment, marketing, and production for all your special events. Go to our website at www.brightliveevents.com, brightliveevents at gmail.com, or visit us on Facebook at Bright Live. What's up, everybody? This episode is brought to you by Josh's Man Cave at Total Image Salon. If you're new to the area or just looking for a new barber, go see my friend Josh. He's a wizard with a straight razor and knows his way around a set of clippers and gives a damn good haircut. I should know. I go see him twice a month. If you're of age, he offers you a shot of whiskey or a nice cold brew while he cuts your hair. If you go down and see him, let him know I sent you. is up everybody i got this super dope dude with me named Dwayne white from Dwayne white comedy he's a really really dope comedian that i had the pleasure to meet through some shows in martinsburg what's up man what's up man i am dope that means good right That's yeah a good thing yeah okay cool i make sure i was gonna have to ask my kids to, to translate so um, let's get a little bit of a backstory about who you are for people that don't know you all that well. Yeah, man. Uh, let's see. Backstory. I was born. Up, no, that's a different story. Um, I, I'm. Yeah. So I was. I was an army guy for. I always. Well, I'll start this way. I was a kid. I wanted to be a stand-up comedian my whole life. That's what I wanted to do. Um, couldn't do it. Because I was uh, 17, couldn't get in any of the clubs, and I and then I joined the army, and they do not uh, find humor funny. So I did that for a long, long time, and when I got out, I uh, I stumbled across this uh, this nonprofit called Armed Services Arts Partnership. Um, long story short, man, it was uh, I, I I saw this sign in a coffee shop that said, "Hey, veterans, come do come take a comedy class uh, at the DC Improv and see how it works out." And, uh, yeah, next thing you know, man, uh, telling jokes and loving it, fell in love with it and then been doing it ever since. And now it's my full-time gig, man. So and here we are. And now I do awesome things like Williamsburg, West Virginia. Her Did I say the right word? Williamsburg, Martinsburg, <laughs> Martinsburg. I don't know. Williamsburg is in regular Virginia, Martinsburg. There's too many Bergs, dude. I don't even know. It's like a weird German town. I don't dude. know. Sorry. I feel the same exact way with all the traveling I do with this regular job of mine. Like right now I'm North of Pittsburgh. <laughs> See too many birds. The Germans taking over, dude. Yeah. They took over. I can say so, that cause I'm married to one. I can talk trash about the Germans. So if you're a German watching, get over it. <laughs> so I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're huge with the Germans. Yeah. You got a big following with the Germans out there and, uh, or the, the Pennsylvania Dutch. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the Amish are all over this podcast. Yeah, There's so many Amish people watching right now. Huddled in a barn somewhere. Never mind. I'm sorry. I, I, I should let you ask questions. <laughs> so uh, speaking of the Bergs and Martinsburg, you're actually. Martinsburg. Uh, yeah. So uh, you've got a show coming up Friday, correct? Yes, in Martinsburg. Bad Habits. I'm hosting with my buddy Ace Jackson in Martinsburg, <laughs> West Virginia. It's a fun time, man. I love that venue because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. It's, bad I've habits. seen some things. I've seen. I've heard some things. Uh, I've. I'm pretty sure. I don't. Yeah, it's going to be a good time though. Especially uh, that lineup is going to be a blast. So we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm excited. Well, you're hosting. You got Ace performing. Don't, Omar's going to be there, correct? Omar's on it. Uh, gosh, Davey, I can't remember who else is on the line. Davey huh? does comedy because I'm afraid to say his last Davey's name. On there. Davey's on there. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, 
Yabba Dabba Dovich, or whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah. I, I I'm the only comic around that can actually pronounce his name correctly, and I'm going to screw it up on purpose. I just want to make that announcement right now <laughs> to the world. Like I'm gonna do it on purpose because last time I saw Ace try to try to pronounce it, and he's been hanging with him longer than I have known him, and he screwed it up. So I got to keep this tradition alive. But. <laughs> that's the so, only person i'd say go get a stage name so it's like it's like davy smith be smith yeah <laughs> whenever i had him on the show a um, couple weeks ago with ace before we started we were we were having this whole conversation about how he how your name his name is pronounced so like and i did it right before we started recording just so i couldn't fuck it up and then oh, I hit record, up. and I was like, dude, I don't even remember what the fucking last name is. It's Davey Does Comedy. <laughs> now, what's up, everybody? <laughs> I screwed names up. Like, I, I hosted a – we're doing a comedy contest. We're kind of in the middle of it down here in, in Woodbridge where, where I have a room. And uh, this the first guy the other night, I messed his name up. And it was something simple like Alan or something. I kept calling him Adam or vice versa. And I felt so bad. And then I got up and I was like, oh, that's it. And I thought I was saying the real name, like, this is his real. And the crowd was like, no, it's Adam. It started yelling at me. I was like, yeah. And I played it off like it was a joke, but it was just me being an idiot. It sucks, man. It's like, I don't care who it is. You're going to screw up some names, dude. It's, it's, it sucks. I felt that. I remember uh, I had a good friend of mine on that I was convinced his name was like Venable, right? It's spelled V-E-N-A-B-L-E, right? And uh, he comes on the podcast, and, you know, we're shooting the shit, you know. And then we start recording, and I do this big whole intro. I'm like, man, we got the man, the myth, the legend. And I drop his name, and I'm like, Venable, right? So I'm going through the whole show thinking I killed it. And then once we get done, they look at me, and they're like, did you, like, were you, like, meaning to fuck his name up? Or oh my was God. that a joke? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's not Venable? And they're like, no, it's Venable. I'm like... Venable. I, of course it is. And I, and I was like, y'all couldn't have corrected me this whole time thinking I killed that intro. Like, I like looked myself in the mirror, they like, getting this intro around. ready. My favorite, actually, one of the first shows I ever did with Ace. It was so funny. Um, we were out in uh, Winchester, Virginia. Not a burg, but a Winchester. And, uh, and this dude, he, he, it was so funny. We had literally met like 30 seconds before the show, the host, and he comes, he gets up, he brings me up. I was like, I've known this guy forever. He's a great dude. He's awesome. He's my, he's my boy. I love him. He's like, Dwight, wah. I was like, dude, way to go. Way to go, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you. My name is Dwayne. Um, that's okay and it was fine except for the fact i was planning on doing a joke about my name being Dwayne and being a white guy uh at, as a joke at the beginning so that kind of threw me off but whatever <laughs> so you just got back from a lot of traveling like the last couple yeah. weeks since last March time i saw a month, you dude yeah. where'd all you get to hit uh let's see um I went to let's let's let me go to my handy dandy notebook because it is a blur right now, man. It's been it's been fun. Oh, yeah. So the first week in March, I was in Dallas. I was at, actually in Plano, Texas, um, did six shows down there with Tony Woods and Chevitz Wichard and Shucky Ducky and all those guys. It was an absolute blast. Um, got back. I was home for like a day and went up to Massachusetts to do some shows in Cape Cod. Um and then I just got back from LA like a few days ago. So it was, it's been a, it's been a month, man. I've been traveling this month. It's been great. It's been a lot of fun, but I am, uh, I'm worn out, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a good time though. Well, speaking of all the traveling, let me ask you another question. Yeah. Out of the month of March, what was, what do you think as of right now is like the most memorable set you got to do in the month of March? Oh man. The most memorable set. Um, I, I think it's kind of a toss up. I mean, it, the, uh, the, the, the shows in, in Dallas were great just because that's home for me. I was, I was, I, when I let, I would lived in like the Dallas Fort Worth area. So it was really cool to get to see some, have some friends. I literally had a friend in the front row that I did not know was coming uh, and looked down. I'm like, Holy crap. This is my buddy from literally fifth grade, which is a long time ago. Uh, and so I was like, this is crazy. So that was a good memory. 
Uh, but then, get, you know, I headlined uh, this one spot up in uh, Cape Cod and that was like in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, and that's all I, that was a, that was a blast, you know, and that's just, uh, you know, just being able to do longer sets, hang out, play with the audience for, you know, a good half hour, 45 minutes is uh, is a lot of fun. So uh, I'd say it's kind of a toss up between those two. Awesome. But, yeah. That's so a boring answer. Like, eh, I'm not going to make a decision. I'm just going to say. So I got one more question for you. Going back to you okay. being from Dallas, okay? Okay. I, yeah, I have I'm a, a Cowboys fan. Don't even do it. I feel like you're not a Cowboys fan. So I was going to ask why. I'm not because, like a good Cowboys fan. Like I don't know like all the players. I look wait, at football like like an Xbox game. Whoever's on the field when it starts, I'm rooting for them. So but, wait, are okay, you a so, Cowboys fan? Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Be because Are you? Hell yeah, I'm a Cowboys fan. Okay. See, no. look at this. that's so, why we hit it off, man. I know. So, so so the reason I started off with you're not a Cowboys fan is because as soon as you were like, don't ask if I'm a Cowboys fan, I'm like, oh, he's not well, a Cowboys you were like, fan. I figured you were like a Redskins fan or some shit. You know, no. like, you know, I don't, or whatever I'm supposed to the commanders. The yeah. commanders. No, um, no, so so I grew up in a uh Cowboys and Redskins house. So okay. you know. I, you know, pick the better of the two because I still remember watching like Troy Aikman and Emmett Smith play. So, yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I, I lived in the suburbs of Dallas when I lived there. I've actually never been to the real the new stadium. I, I used to live like just a few minutes down the road from from uh, Texas Stadium there in Irving. So I would go all the time. And I honestly, when I was a kid in like the late 80s, early 90s, they kind of sucked. So it was easy to get tickets. So it's kind of it's kind of nice. Uh but then they got really good right after I left home. So then uh, it was tougher. But yeah, I, I do. I think uh, like I'm a football fan in the sense of like I, I, uh, I think the last pro football game I went to was in like '94. So, so I'm like, when I say I'm a fan, I have a jersey, but that's just because I went to Korea and they were cheap. So I'm a football fan in the sense of I've never been to a professional game. Oh, okay. And uh, the only football games I've ever been to are collegiate or high school. So, Ladies and gentlemen, Billy has never been to a professional football game. Somebody needs to take him to a game. Did, in, I've been to Washington. FedEx Field, though. I've been in FedEx Field for for the WVU and VTech uh, neutral for grounds the purge? game. <laughs> there was a purge going on. That was a place to hide. We decided to go to FedEx Field. But, uh, no... Uh, the one time I got to go to AT&T Stadium, I didn't get to go in. Like, I was working in, like, the Dallas, Arlington, Fort Worth area, so I got to drive past okay. it and, like, reminisce, like, dude, that stadium's fucking huge. It's the Death Star. You can see it from space. It's so big. It's, in, like, when they were building it, I would look down Highway 10 and just be like, holy shit, that thing's insane. Uh, I've never been there either, man. I need to go. Like, I, I, I every, every time I go to Dallas, I'm like, I'm going to go check it out this time. I'm going to go see it. And it just never worked out. So maybe, maybe one day I'm going to go back in October. I'm going to a festival down there. So maybe that's the time to check it out. Maybe well, that's I've, my chance. I've, I feel like in people's travels, they are, they're always like, Hey, I want to go do this. And then it's the end of it. And I was like, shit, I forgot to go do that. Well, especially when it's home. You know what I mean? Because like everyone's like, oh, I want to see you when you when you kind of come through. It's like, oh, yeah, I love it. I want to come see you, too. But I just got in at 3 a.m. from the show. So uh, I need sleep. Um, but yeah, so there's always there's always more people to see than I have time to see, unfortunately. And it's like that for everybody when they go home. You know what I mean? It's just it's tough. But <clears throat> it's yeah, I'll get there one day, maybe I don't know, before I die, hopefully. Uh, one of the view viewers wanted to know what festival you're going to down in Dallas. Uh, the Plano, uh, Plano Comedy Festival um, in October. I think it's like the second week of October. They were supposed to have it last year. Well, so they had it two years ago. They went virtual um, during the height of the pandemic. And then they were going to have it in person last year. And then they like the everything was spiking again. So they were just, they just called it off and said, Hey, if you're in it this year, you're automatically in it next year. So I'm going to be down there in October, Plano all over the place. I'm not sure exactly even where the venues are, but they had, I'll tell you what, man, they, they run even an online festival. They ran a great festival two years ago. So I'm excited to go down there and, and do it live. Uh, it was cool to get to meet some of them down there this last time, but Plano's got a cool, a pretty decent scene. You got a couple of good clubs in Plano and then there's tons of stuff in Dallas. So it should be a good time. 
So is uh so speaking of this festival, is this your is this your second time doing a festival, but like with the same people, or have you've or have you been had the honor of participating in a few? I've I've done a few. Um you know, obviously there was a few that were online that were just kind of like hit or miss during the height of the pandemic, but Plano was one that was actually solid, very, very good. Um did one in Cleveland. Uh, and then yeah, a few online ones. So yeah, this I, this would be like my third or fourth festival, but they're fun, man. I tell you what, I like I just like the networking aspect of them. They're fun because like a lot of the stuff that I did, like the LA trip, happened because of someone I met in Cleveland at a festival. Um, the same with the Boston trip. Um, you know, just stuff like that. You just end up linking up with comics that are fun and 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 you get along with. And they're like, yeah, like, why don't you come out and do my show? Like, yeah, absolutely. So it's a good time. So, um, I remember whenever I first met you last year, you were still balancing a regular full-time job and the comedy. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was something that you and I had talked about. Yeah. What was that final, like, catalyst that was like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm out. I'm gonna live my dream. <laughs> they told me I had to come back to the office five days a week. That was the end of it. That was it. I was like... Fuck you. I have proven in the last year and a half that we can do this job from home. And I was like, and they went, nope, you have to come in. And they were just kind of being dicks about it. Like, because I was like, ah, I can do this from home. And they're like, you will come in. I'm like, well, you know, like, because it was a military organization. It was for the government. I was like, you know, I'm not in the military, right? And they're like, yeah, but this is a military organization. I'm like, not really. Um, and then they, I said, so are you willing to lose me over this? I said, I just want to come in. Like, I just want to work from home like two days a week. They're like, you have to come in. This is, yeah, this is how it's going to be. And I was like, are you willing to lose me? They go, anybody's replaceable. I'm like, well, fucking you're right. And so I was like, I'm out. It's the greatest decision ever. I, I, I love it. I love it so much. I picked up a part-time gig, like teaching leadership to the Navy, which could be labeled a waste of time. But I do that like on, on you know, just a few hours uh, a week here and there, uh, teach a couple classes. And uh, But no, man, I, I literally love it. I, it's, it was the greatest thing I ever did. It freed me up uh you know to to work on comedy to travel to do the things i really want to do um i wish i'd have done it sooner uh to be perfectly honest but uh you know the timing was right it was good and i was like you know we can make this work and luckily i got a very supportive wife and uh she was like yeah let's do it let's make it happen and here we are here we are so yeah i'm i, I love it i tell you what man i cannot imagine like especially in the government like being up in uh, like, like up in dc again like in, as a cog in the wheel i'm like no i'm freaking so glad to be out of that situation <laughs> so well that's a not scary... that there's anything wrong with that government employees in dc that come to my shows i love you but i would not want to do your job anymore <laughs> that, that, that that's something in life that's scary for anybody it doesn't matter how old you are like taking that leap to do what your dream Dude. is is yeah like that's yeah. something that I deal with right now because, like, in my mind, I'm like, with this show, I've got like a two to three year goal of taking it full time and like trying to like take it slow. And then I'm sitting here at my real job every week, and I'm like, "Fuck, man, why can't this thing just take off already?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and it's it is it's scary. I mean, all anything's scary. Like that. Big, I remember when I got out of the army in 2015. I decided in 2014 to retire. And dude, I'd been in since I was 17. I was like, ah, I, dude, I didn't sleep for a year. I swear to God, I was up every night. Just like, oh, what am I going to do? I'm going to be on food stamps. And it's like, oh, you know, and everyone's like, dude, you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to get a job. I'm like, no, oh, but no, what if I'm not, you know, and you, you know, you get responsibilities with a family and all that. I mean, it's, it's tough, but, um, you know, I just, I was lucky and I got to a point where I could do it and just say, you know what, we'll just buckle down. We'll stop spending money and, you know, I'll live on my retirement, but, and then, uh, yeah, it's just it's fun, man. I mean, it, it's, it's freeing, but it, it was scary. It was scary. But I'll tell you when I dropped that paper that day, I, I never forget. I, I didn't, I didn't have a regret in the world. I was like, man, this is perfect. This is the right answer. I just knew it was right. You know what I mean? It sounds so cheesy, but I really did. I just like, I knew this was the right answer. So I'm never going back to that shit. I remember seeing you the first time because you hosted one of the first shows at Bad Habits. At oh, least I think yeah. it was one of the first shows of Bad Habits. At least it was like one of the first shows after like the pandemic shit. 
Yeah, it was actually, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the night that was the first night that they lifted like the limits of the numbers that they could have in there. I think that's what they told me that night. So it was packed. It was like, yeah, it was one of the first nights um, after it was all over. Because yeah, that was the show that uh, you had Rory, Rory Haran on, Omar, mm-hmm. Davey. I don't remember the woman's name because I missed her set. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean. It just literally, I walked in as she was coming off stage. I'm trying to remember, too, who it was. It was a long time ago. Um, so... Yeah, I don't remember. I cannot remember for the life of me. I'll remember here in a minute. But yeah, dude, like I, I remember seeing that and I was like, because that was my first time ever seeing stand up. Really? Was, what was that? Bad habits. Seeing it live, no you know. Okay. I've, okay. I, I've done all, you know, I've, I've watched just about every comedy special that was available growing up and like that I'm wasn't key- the one in june was it that was that the juneteenth show or was that, no, the, that was the other okay no, good because the was, juneteenth show was like very low 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 attendance but that one was that one was dope man that was like that was like packed it was awesome yeah i was at that one i think it was like january yeah it would have been earlier yeah that's true that would have been much earlier and um, then i made it to the next one that i think Dan Kaufman was yeah. Dan was hosting for? that one because I was somewhere else that night. Yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. I'm was at the Juneteenth one. <laughs> we don't talk about that one. <laughs> we don't talk about that. There's pictures of me. There may be pictures of me in a dashiki, and I don't want to have to be pulling like a Will Smith apology. So I just want to <laughs> say, you know, it didn't exist. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But uh, that was. <laughs> That was, that was Omar's. He's like, hey, you want to wear it? I'm like, yes, I do. And it got, I got on stage like, this thing smells so much like weed. This thing is so much weed in this thing. I was like, I am getting a contact eye off this thing. I hit his shirt. But anyway. Yeah. So that was your first time seeing live stand-up? Yes. And you came back. That's a shock. That's amazing. Um, Nine times out of ten, if, I'm, if I see you ace or davy on the lineup or or even omar you're probably going to get me there omar's hilarious i love omar man he's got that teacher vibe going he's such a good dude um yeah no it's it, I, that's awesome man i i had no idea that that that, uh, that was kind of your first time seeing live stand up that's that's cool well that's i had a cool. friend of mine convince me to go because he loved it and i was like we just finished recording the podcast that evening so i was like man i'll I'll think about it. Like I'm kind of drained. We just talked for two hours. Like I need to decompress a little. Cause this was back. Like we were still early on in the show. So like and I would do an epic. Oh man. Perfect. You got to decompress at the show. Well, I'm glad you did, man. I mean, I, and I, that was, a, that was a special show. That was a lot of fun. That was a, that was a ton of fun that night. Um, I'm angry that I can't remember who else was on that show right now. Dude. Killing me. Anyway, I'll, I'll go back and dig through my dig through my messages and posters and stuff and figure but, it out. But like in all honesty, if it wouldn't have been for me coming to that show, like I would have never linked up with you, I would have never linked up with Ace, Davey, Rory, like any of you guys to even get you to have this op- give me the opportunity to sit down and shoot the shit with you for 30, 45 minutes. It's fate. It's fate. It was ordained, but no, I don't know if that's fate. it was but, uh, yeah. But uh, I remember you were talking earlier. But before we came on stream about doing clean shows and I've seen you normally. Right. So I need to ask, how is that thought process going into doing a clean show for you? Because I've seen you live and it's not the cleanest show I've ever seen. (laughs) No, I mean, I I don't think I'm filthy, but I do cuss a lot. Like I was like, so here's the thing I'll say is, is two things that uh, I guess allow me to do that. Um, one, I was raised in a weird home. My father was an alcoholic and took me to bars like all the time. And I would sit on a bar stool with him. Right. And my grandfather was a Southern Baptist minister who thought alcohol was a devil and never said a square word ever. Right. And so I got really, really good at like whatever situation I was in of keeping my language appropriate. (laughs) Sometimes I would fuck up and say bad things at church, but um it was it was it was like that um and then uh and then i did actually i have three friends really really good friends that only do clean right um nikki knowles pt bratton and uh and nick baskerville and we did 
they only do clean. So we did this show for a year online during the pandemic uh, called Clean AF. And uh, every Friday we did, you know, it was like an, it was like an hour long show. Um, and so it was nice, you know, and, and a lot of this stuff I can do, like, obviously I can't, I think I did the sex toys joke that night that you were there and that was early on in its creation. And, uh, I can't do that, but a lot of the jokes I do, I can change words or, or change things out, you know, and, and cut them out. And, you know, I do a lot of stuff with, uh, with that same organization, Armed services, arts partnership. Um, I teach for them now. I teach that, that class that I took. Um, and, and, you know, we keep it at PG 13 and below. Um, and so it kind of gets me, you know, kind of forced me into that. Like, you know, I do, I do a joke about having sex with a cuckoo clock, which is an analogy for my wife. And, and, you know, it starts in my brain. It starts dirty. Cause I think just like, I'm an army guy. Like I cuss in my brain all the time. Like when I wrote the jokes, I can't fuck clock. And then, and then I remember, okay, now how do I dumb that down? Or, you know, how do I clean that up? I guess more, more importantly for, a for a cleaner show so i'm like oh can't have sex with the clock okay that's pg-13 i can do that um you know and and i find when i talk about my kids i like to cuss because they make you do that but i can do that it's, and that's a but that's a like a universal theme that hits with everybody so i can still do that and be like oh my kids are stupid uh, and i don't have to go my kids are fucking stupid so uh, it's i don't know i i, I like I kind of like the challenge of doing a clean show, uh, you know, but it's scary sometimes. I just, sometimes I just look and I'm like, somebody's, I'm just, if I look at everybody and they're just like, oh, then I know it's time to get off the stage that I've just said something wrong and it's time to go. So <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's different for sure. I, I want to be able to work in, in all environments, you know, like, it's yeah. like clean rooms, non clean rooms, urban rooms, Martinsburg, whatever, you know, I mean, I want to. Hickville. Um, yeah you know i didn't say that you did oh dude i live there so i know what it is <laughs> dude i grew up i i say i'm from texas i grew up in a small town in southern illinois and it is like it, you know until i moved to dallas and it is like it is such it reminds me every time i go to like these like smaller towns it's it, like i go do shows in pennsylvania sometimes i do shows out there in west virginia sometimes in winchester so it always reminds me of, of home when i'm driving in i'm like okay these are my people these are my people we're gonna talk about deer hunting and we're gonna talk about uh you know hitting deer with your car we'll talk about all that stuff all the things that are important dude the amount of car the amount of deer i've hit in a vehicle at the age i am is not okay <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to say that I haven't hit one with my car yet because I'm afraid. But uh, yeah, they're everywhere, Piercy. But I, I hunt, so I I try to help eliminate the problem uh, in Northern Virginia by removing some of the deer population every year and putting them in my belly. So I do my I do my part. What kind of hunting you do? You a rifle hunter, bow hunter, anything, man? I like I do like bow hunting. Um, up here you can bow hunt forever so like the season is insane like it starts in september bow hunting right now and i'm like i it's like i don't want to i'm tired but i start i'll start with bow early up here in northern virginia and then i'll kind of work my way in. i have a i have a property that i can hunt down in uh fuck your county um fuck your so county we, fuck your county no <laughs> fuck your county <laughs> I can, I can, uh, what? I can't believe they named that shit. That they got away with one on that one. It's like, no, fuck your Ken. But uh, yeah, I go rifle hunting down there <laughs> when when season comes in. I got I got a spot with some friends, and uh, yeah, it's uh, so I do it all, man. I like to do it all. It's a good. Uh, I lo in the fall it's great. You just sit there for hours and just think of things and be in quiet peace and quote just me and my cell phone which is probably a bad idea, but whatever. My, my, my go-to for hunting is I can't remember the last time that I actually took my rifles out. Like I'll really? bow hunt during rifle season. Granted, okay. well, I, I hunt in behind my house, so I don't have a whole lot of shooting lane, but right. just something about that. Um, the, like, I guess you could say the 
intimacy, the aggressiveness yeah. of being within 20, 20 to 50 yards of your target. Probably, yeah, it's awesome. You can have deer like literally right under you. It's like, oh my God, man. And it's usually a deer you don't want to shoot. You're like, would you please fucking go away or bring a friend? One of the two. This is bullshit. But no, I do that up here, especially because up here, there's really nowhere to rifle hunt or gun hunt in general. So, and I got a, a little, it's basically somebody's backyard um, in Fairfax County that I hunt. And it's so fun because you go into these big bougie, like million dollar houses and you're like, what's up? I'm coming in here to hunt. And they think I'm like redneck as the day is long. I'm like, you have no idea. Dude, like, that reminds me of that one show I used to see on TV, like where it followed the guys around that went to like the suburban neighborhoods on like Long Island and in Connecticut and like bow hunted in backyards. Like I've always like ever since I watched that show as a kid, I was like, that is my dream hunt. I want to be in someone's it's- backyard in the burbs. It's so convenient, man. It is so good. Con- Although the problem is like I, there's one spot I go and it, inevitably once a year I'll shoot something and it'll run onto this other person's property and they are so obnoxiously prepared. They're like, please don't shoot our dogs. Please. Don't. I'm like, lady, do you understand how bow hunting works? Like I can't, I'm not going to just accidentally fling an arrow at your dogs. I promise. Like, trust me, I've seen them. They've ran over here into my hunting area. Like a lot, like I'm not going to shoot your dog. Well, please. And then God help me one time, man, one time this thing, it, it went over there and it was, it took forever to, well, it didn't take me forever, but I went right over there to get it actually. And there was a Fox that had gotten there before me. And it was like, it somehow got the tail off and ran away with the tail. I'm like, okay, whatever. And, and so I drug the deer out, didn't do any of the nasty, dirty work, whatever over there. Cause it's their property. I don't want to disrespect them. And I get this like 200 word text, like, do you got to stop doing this? My dogs went out and they came back with the tail. It's going to, it's going to make my kids, it's going to, it's going to scar my kids for life. I'm like, Hey, you live in the woods. Okay. Your kids are going to see some dead things. B I cannot control if a fox takes some stuff over there and your dogs mess around. Like I didn't, I didn't give the tail to the fox. The fox <laughs> took it, and I, I asked him nicely to bring it back, and he refused. So can you get off my ass? Like this is, not, I'm so sorry about your dogs. Are they traumatized? Mm. You can give dogs Prozac now. Give them some Prozac and take some for you, because I was like, you've got to calm down, this man. Dude, that's. That, that's one thing that like blows my mind is I spend a lot of time in the city because of work like Baltimore, Philly, yeah, Jersey City, right? And I could not imagine living anywhere close to one. That's why I'm glad I live where I do. Like I live 30 minutes from the nearest town. I can oh. piss off my back porch and hunt off my back porch. I no can't too, but my neighbors get mad. Trust me, because <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good because i'm on elevated thing it's bullshit it's a whole thing my wife gets mad too but it's i'm like i piss outside every chance i get no i i kind of i don't know what i want man i, I you know it's like i'm in the burbs now but it's kind of nice because i'm close enough to the city where i can get up there do things but i'm far enough away from the city where i can go the other direction and be in the country i, I don't know i kind of i guess this is like the the seam you know what i mean it's like but but i i hate the burbs at times and i love the burbs at times and you're like like this is this this is a real thought that i the real thing i said out loud last week i was like i wish it would warm up so i could put out my grass seed and i immediately wanted to just kill myself i was like this is a phrase that just came out of my mouth as a man i'm like this is fuck i'm old this is bullshit but yeah I, I, you know so you live that suburban life i was like god damn it like pick, i'm like pick a lane Dwayne. you gotta be in one of the other man but here we are so in- so 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 going back to your story about the fox yes we got a commenter who is my fiance oh god. who comments swiper no swiping swiper no swiping swiper listen there's a fox upstairs that tried to swipe and he's on my wall now so listen i got a i got a fox with a bow a few years ago and it was great it is now hanging on it's now pose on the wall he watches tv it's pretty nice um i hate foxes i just want to say that publicly i hate them um Mostly because, like, in Fauquier County, you're not allowed to kill them because the, the horse people got a hold of that. So, like, they, they chase foxes like it's the 1800s in England. Um, and so, like, you can't shoot them. And, but they're there. There's, they're there every day. There's 100 of them running around the stand. You're like, dude, I should be able to thin this herd a little. But I'm a rule follower, so I don't. Sorry if I'm upsetting anti-hunters on the show, commenter person. I hope you're a hunter 
or at least like I hope you're middle of the road at least and not like well she's my fiance so she kind of has to deal with me hunting <laughs> so you don't have a choice <laughs> but um choice. next time he goes out and pisses off the back deck you can shoot him <laughs> no don't do that i do it all the time i'll end up with an arrow through my knee i'll, I'll, I'll be like achilles <laughs> it's the only thing we have left is men it's like this is just, I can, what are you doing like i can still do this i can piss standing up leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> my thing is we'll come home after a show my wife goes to shows with me a lot she's awesome uh, but she gets me because i'll get drunk and after the show not during after i'll get <laughs> if she's there and then i'll be i'll like we'll get home and I'm like i gotta pee and i'll walk around to the side of the house <laughs> and she's like what are you doing i'm like it's late nobody's out it's fine it's fine and she's mad at me i'm like you're just mad because you can't do this you get mad at me <laughs> All well, we hey, have, all hey, we have man, left, ladies. That that is all we have left. But we're getting pretty close to time. Do you have any yes, closing remarks for any shows coming up for Dwayne White Comedy? Anything? Yeah, I mean, the big thing I would say is check out DwayneWhiteComedy dot com. That's where all the shows I got going on are listed. Um, check me out on TikTok at Dwayne White at Dwayne White Comedy. Uh, I'm trying to get a shitload of followers there because it's the future. I think I don't know, uh, but yeah, man, I got let me. I got the calendar up right here. Um, I had it all up of what I had going on. Then I went back to look at March. Um, yeah. So, man, bad habits. Well, first of all, I got shows at the Electric Palm all the time um, up in Woodbridge, Virginia. For anybody who's up this way, uh, and Public House. Those are my. Those are kind of my rooms that I run up here. And then uh, I'll be at Bad Habits Friday the first. I'll be at Cedar Run Brewery in Noakesville with a couple of really good, excuse me, with a couple of really, really funny friends uh, on Saturday the 2nd. And then after that, you have to go to the website um, <laughs> to check it out. But no, I will be, I'll be at the DC Improv on, uh, this is a big one. Actually, this is a big one. I'll be at the DC Improv on April 6th with uh, Ramin Mastafavi. He does this thing called couples therapy, which is an absolute, I've, I'm, I'm, super excited to be on this one it's uh it's stand-up comedians and then they get people get like a qr code or something and they can they send in like relationship questions and we give you advice and solve your relationship problems or make sure you are not in that relationship by the end of the show that's it's one or the other so uh that's april 6th at, at the dc improv so yeah man it's a, it's an exciting time well man with that being said i say we wrap this old girl up right, uh, Everyone who's listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it means a lot to me. It means a lot that you guys actually give a shit to hear what I got to say. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you could, go check out our new website. It literally just came live yesterday. It's uh, the Wilson King Podcast.com. You know, too easy. You Using the same name. But you can check out all of our episodes there. You can, it'll redirect you to wherever you can listen to us at and here soon we're gonna have youtube videos and it will scrub youtube every day and pull our videos into the website and you can also go to our buy me a coffee link and donate and hopefully within the next few months we can figure out a way to do a subscription-based thing to get you guys some exclusive content with that being said everybody have a great rest of your evening be safe be responsible don't drink and drive. Peace. See you Friday. We're good to go. Dude, thank you for coming on. I appreciate oh, dude, it. For having me. This was a blast, dude. Honestly, thank that you. was the fastest going 40 some minutes I've ever like I've had in a long time on this live stream. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. That's awesome. But uh, I'm glad glad to be on it, man. Thanks for the invite. You have if you ever have a Saturday or Sunday open that is not like family or comedy related, I'd love to get you into the studio to do a little bit longer of a uh, session. Typically, yeah, right typically in studio, I try to keep it no more than an hour forty-five, two hours. Jesus. Typically, I try to cut it off at like an hour and a half, maybe an hour. Right but in the studios where a lot of the wild conversations go down at. You know, got to be a little bit P, you know, got to be a little bit uh, inside the lines on Facebook or you get canceled. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's fair. That is fair. We but, need that this week. 
But all right, brother, you have a great rest of your evening, and thank you so all much right, brother, for coming too, man. on. I'll see you. Are you going to be there Friday? Yes, I. as long as I get home at a decent enough time from my adventures this week, right on. <laughs> I should well, good be Good luck, there. man. Be safe getting back. Um, I will, man. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you Friday, man. I appreciate it. You have a great rest of your evening. Later, buddy.